Hey guys, Dallas from SFR here today to talk about bump steer. Now this is something that we see a lot in lifted Jeeps and something that uh, a lot of people don't understand and a lot of times people don't even know they have it and because they train themselves to drive around it and they just say, oh, my Jeep wanders a little and that's normal. Well, it doesn't have to be normal. It can be fixed and it really should be fixed because it is a safety issue. Um, now to explain exactly what it is that you, you would see, if you're going down the road, you, you come across an intersection, you got one of those drainage dips. If you go through it and either you hold the wheel and your Jeep darts all over the place, or if you've trained yourself to drive around it, you'll find what you do is you let go of the steering wheel and the Jeep will go straight, but your steering wheel's going all over the place. Yeah, you got bump steer. And we're gonna to talk today about how to identify it, what the causes are, and how to fix it. Because what you really don't want is you get in one of those panic stop situations, you stomp on the brakes, the front end of the Jeep dives down, and your steering goes off one way or the other. It's not a good situation. So let's see how to fix it. There are basically two components of your steering and suspension system that control whether or not you will have bump steer. Those are your track bar and your drag link. Now this is a stock Jeep Cherokee front end and it's pretty typical of what you're gonna see out there. Now in this case, the drag link connects from the steering box pitman arm down to the knuckle. The other option that a lot of vehicles run, it goes from the steering box to the tie rod. Now the next piece that we're concerned with is the track bar and it's what centers the axle. It'll connect from the frame, from a solid mount on the frame rail, down to a solid point on the axle, and it's what locates the axle side to side underneath the vehicle and keeps it centered. Now, as your suspension cycles, moves up and down through its travel, the drag link and the track bar will travel in arc because they're fixed at one end and will travel up and down with the axle on the other end. So there are three things that we're looking at the first one, and by far the most important one, is that the track bar and the drag link have to be parallel. If they're not parallel, the two linkages are traveling on different arcs, and as your suspension compresses, the axle is going to move in a different direction from what your steering is going to move along. And that's going to cause your wheels to move back and forth and cause bump steer. The second one is that you want both of those linkages to be as close to horizontal as possible. If you follow the arc that both linkages travel, going up and down from horizontal gives you the least movement side to side, and so the least effect as your suspension travels. If you have a big angle, the axle end of both of those linkages are moving horizontally as the axle is moving up and down. The last one and least important is that the two linkages are as equal in length as possible, and that's to get the, the two arcs to be as equal as possible. All right, so now what to look for. Now here's that stock setup again, and what we're gonna do is draw a couple of lines on the picture that go directly from center to center of the joints on the drag link and the joints on the track bar. Now you can ignore any bent track bars or drag links, any of those bends or things in there, they don't change anything about the geometry. You just wanna go from center to center of the pivot points. And what you'll see here is they're both quite parallel, they're fairly flat, and they're pretty close to the same length. And that's what you want, and that's what you would expect from a stock vehicle. And here we have a picture that was sent to me by one of my customers who is having a problem with bump steer. And at first glance, it doesn't look bad at all, but as soon as you add those lines on there, you can see that the drag link and the track bar are not at all parallel. And in this case, all he really needed to do was go to a shorter drop pitman arm to get everything back in line and driving straight again. So here's another one that I see a lot of. Now this guy has relocated his steering to the top of the knuckle presumably to get better ground clearance and a flatter drag link. However, they didn't properly relocate the track bar to match. 
And when you look at the lines, again, you see they're definitely not parallel, and this is gonna cause bump steer. In this case, probably the best thing to do is to try and move the axle end of the track bar up higher to get the angles to match. All right, this one should be obvious by now. Don't be this guy. So now for a couple examples of proper steering geometry. This first one is the SFR one ton under the knuckle kit that we sell for Cherokees and TJs. As you can see, it retains basically stock geometry, drives really nice down the road. The next one is our high roller kit, also known as a WJ swap kit. Um, it's a high steer kit, moves everything up higher, gets you better angles as far as keeping the drag link and track bar flat. It's really the best at everything, and as you can see, even when it flexes, everything stays nice and in line. In addition, this kit also upgrades you to much larger, higher performance brakes for stopping bigger tires. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys learned some stuff, and uh, leave your comments on anything you might want to see in the future. And if you would, take some time, take a look over at stinkyfab.com. We got lots of products for your Jeeps, steering kits, motor mounts, suspension parts, and uh, hope to see you guys on the trail. Have a good one.